matching hundreds. It's the coach, and this is the 2018 season on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see teams with a couple of running backs who each went over 100 yards a weekend to go, as it'll be the New York Jets as they get set to square off against the Buffalo Bills. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, winter is just around the corner as you get a look at New Airfield, just south of Buffalo, New York. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. And they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. And the offense last week, they had things humming. If you're a defensive... Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. They'll have the speedy Tyrod Tanner calling the shots, the former Virginia Tech Hokie. And while he won't admit it because his team lost the game, he had some fun in the last one. He I threw mean, for over 400 yards. I mean, there's no getting around it. As a QB, yeah, okay. We lost the game, but boy, that felt good flinging it around. Now he's got to figure out how to do the exact same thing, yet turn it into a win. Now a play fake here on first down. He gets it into the hands of Larry Fitzgerald. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The numbers for Fitzgerald from last week. Four catches, 63 yards. And what we just saw there is exactly what they need against this defense. Big plays. They were able to pick up a first down on that one. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said, write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Ready, back, three, two. Third and long, it's Taylor. And he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And deep he goes into Jets territory before being taken down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. If post pattern is often equated as a changeup route, how about when you throw it to your big guy down the center of the field? Covered or not, you have great confidence he's going to come down with the football. And when he does, as we just saw, long gains often result. On first and goal, Gurley. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Todd Gurley. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Bills take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Parkey with the extra point, and it's now a 7 0 game. Here's Parkey now set to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Leading the charge at quarterback, the former Georgia Bulldog, Matthew Stafford. 
And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. This is the running back power. And this defense feeling the encouragement. They stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon. And we take a look now at the New York offense. Brandon, if I told you I want to talk about a running back that averaged 4.4 yards a carry, scored five touchdowns on 772 total yards, you'd want to do that, right? Exactly, because that's what we're going to do. Bilal Powell. He had a big year in 2017, knows how to run in traffic, knows how to get to the perimeter, and can shake people in the secondary and take it the distance. Big year for Bilal Powell in 2017. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. There with a tackle, Dietrich Wise Jr. This is how they'll line up on the defensive side for Buffalo. They are the 22nd ranked unit against the run in the NFL. And stopping the run, that's been an issue for them all season long. Aren't you glad that you're not coaching the defense right now? I'm very glad. They said that they've seen it in doses, but very, very small doses. Yeah, you've got to be consistent. It's down in and down out. Being able to play it, understand what you have to get done, and finally stop some people. Put them on the ground. Hard throw incomplete. Third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They go play action now, Taylor. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Charles Clay, an 80-yard touchdown. And his guys get the quick strike touchdown. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call. But he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Then it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The New York set to take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. This running game is so important for them, and they know that. It helped lead them to a victory last week when he was over 100 yards. Let's face it, it's their identity, and that's what they want to play to. They want to be that team that runs the ball really well each and every week, and right now we're seeing a pretty good pattern of that happening. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams are just panic abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Here's Powell. And an alley to run. The 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 31 yards there and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From the red zone now, Stafford. His throw caught right around the six. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. 
First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They run with Powell. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Bilal Powell, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Jets are able to make this a close game again. Bryant's extra point up and good. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. He picked up another first down with that run. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a gain of 13 and a Buffalo first down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Now Gurley staying down. Well, let's hope he's all right. We'll check on his status when we return to Orchard Park. Play action, it's Taylor. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know they're going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from it. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through and picking up first downs. Escaping the pressure right. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. now at the defensive starters for the Jets. They were terrific in the win over Tennessee a week ago. And it was the pass rush that really keyed their victory. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. From the two now, second and goal. From the gun, it's Taylor. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Larry Fitzgerald with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Bills will extend their lead. Well, Brandon, if we go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator, he showed us his script. Didn't show us everything now. He said, here's the script for the game. I think everything's going according to plan in a big way. Three drives, three touchdowns. Yeah, that's about as good as that is as good as you can do, I guess. So well done. Yeah, well done indeed. Tremendous execution. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. And New York set to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Play action. Stafford. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough. Bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. 
They go play action here on first down. On the left side, it's McDonald. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read. But... And he is in. Touchdown, New York. Bilal Powell with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Jets have made this a one-score game. And a pair of rushing touchdowns now for him in the first quarter. And I'm liking what I'm seeing from his big guys up front because they're winning the leverage game. How many times have we talk about low man wins, right? Move the defensive front aside, create those gaps and holes. He's found his way through them for two touchdowns. And after both of those touchdowns, he went right up to that O-line and hit each of them on the helmet. That's he a, recognized That's it. a smart man. You know what else he should do? If this continues, take them all to dinner. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start it on the ground with Morris. And not a whole lot doing there, so he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They face a second and seven to start things out. Now Taylor. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to hold that one in. Now Taylor. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Going down back at the 28. It'll be a loss of a yard. And that's going to make it fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. They begin with a carry for Powell. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. Holding offense. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. Sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there and it'll bring up a third down. Sometimes your crosses get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Just a two-yard pickup, and that should necessitate a call for the punt team here on fourth down. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. Now the quarterback, Tyron Taylor, is our focus here in this player's spot. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Here's a handoff to begin the drive to Morris. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. On second down, Taylor. Incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Josh Doxon, and it's third down. 
There are a good number of coaches that any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. Now it's Taylor. And this is going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And New York set to take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So negative yardage, a loss of three on second down, and that leads to a tough third down call. The shotgun snap for Stafford. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. The stop troops, they're enjoying things right now. They made it very difficult for them throughout the half. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it. Somehow the ball finds his way back to him. But tone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. The Bills on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. Over the middle and caught by the tight end play. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Taylor to his big tight end play for the Buffalo first. Now it's Morris. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Man open the right side. It's the tight end play. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. This is Morris. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Right back to him on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top 10 units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? Caught on the left side, Fitzgerald. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. 
Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the backside of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. And he's got to be frustrated. Bottled up for the third straight play. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. This offense bent the defense in their long drive downfield, but once they got within sight of the goal line, the defense went to don't break mode and is stiffened. And Parkey's kick is good. And the Bills will add on to their lead. Well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. What did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. They start the drive with a give to power. And a decent gain there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Now Stafford, Powell on the catch. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. First down now, but that clock rolling. Stafford on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I you put just a little bit too much heat on that one. When you throw it to the outside, you do have to be careful because you got to keep it away from the defender. But you also have to give your own guy a chance, too. Now Stafford. Dumps off to Powell, and he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Throwing on third down, Stafford. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Dustin Colquitt now. He's been terrific so far. Fielded just inside the 30. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. There defensively was Buster screen to knock it away. This defense could use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. Second and ten, it's Taylor again. Josh Dotson's got it complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Taylor now. Over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. 319. Operating from the gun. Taylor. He's going to look deep down the field. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. The way he's been slinging in the first half, you expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown. But I guess he's got to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. Now it's Taylor. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Charles. 
Bills Clay with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bills will add on to their lead. Parkey adds the extra point. And that will make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Here's Parkey now set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now a first down throw. Stafford. Quick slant. Caught by Moore. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. On second down, here's Stafford. It's complete to Parker, left side. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. On first down, it's Stafford. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It's a gain of six on the play, and it's a second down. From the 50, Stafford. Throw left side complete. It's McDonald. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. On first and 10, Stafford. He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And he quickly clocks it, and they're going to have a good shot at getting three here before the break. And that one goes incomplete. They tried something out of the bag of tricks, but it's incomplete and now second down. And Bryant's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So they're still down, but they are able to salvage three here heading into the lockers. This is what you work on from the beginning of training camp. Heading into the half, put some points on the board. No matter what the score says at that point, you've accomplished what you set out to do. So we've reached halftime here in Or. So I'm waltzing down Main Street, got an umbrella, just a torrential downpour. And I look over, and this guy, stone face, wearing a poncho that says, don't rain on my parade. And he is just angry. And uh, we got to go. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the rest later. Here we go, third quarter. Bilal Powell and his offensive mates retaking the field. And he's failed again. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They start this with a run for Powell. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. And McDonald here over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Back to throw, Stafford. And oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Give him 30 yards there. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. To throw on second down to Stanford. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Eli Harold leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Set, 
Well, no takes to start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up fourth. And Bryant's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Taylor will bring the Bills up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They begin the drive with Morris. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one. Maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Paul Powell and his offensive mates retaking the field. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you're doing across the defensive front. Instead of a linebacker's being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps, and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, this would glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. This pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. 
He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. Here's Morris. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. It's complete to Brown, right side. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. They run with Morris. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. He's got the hook up to John Brown on the right side. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And they'll run it here. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 10 yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven, reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of six there on first. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find a soft spot like they did there? tough to do because what they normally would do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed. Back now in Buffalo. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And they give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. From the two now, second and goal. He's going to get it running right. And he'll get it. Touchdown, Buffalo! Alfred Morris, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bills will extend their lead. Trying to bust out of that losing funk, and these fans have to like this. All right, fellas, this is more like it. And I know that if this holds up after the game, they're going to give the fans a lot of credit being at home, getting the support. But you and I both know it goes deeper than that. They had to get it together in their own facility, look each other in the eye and say, okay, what's it going to take to break this losing streak? And they really came together with a good week of practice. On first down, Stafford here. His throw incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. That looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. 
fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. That throw good for four. It's second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Looking left, sideline incomplete. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Eli Apple was a top 10 pick in the 2016 draft, and one of the reasons, his ability to get better, because remember, he's a young guy. And they just figured he could go ahead and grow. Redshirt sophomore when he came out. He's going at a pretty good rate. How about that play right there? Very nice pass deflection. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And here come the Bills. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I will continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit with play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. And now it's second down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Glover Quinn there on the stop. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 60 catches for him now on the year. This last one, a first down. Taylor now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brent, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Kyle Fuller, the one to make the tackle. They're in a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Eluding the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. Taylor able to use those legs of his to pick up a first. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So that one will be accepted. Now they'll throw with Taylor. And his throw here is incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Going up top, and this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Josh Doxson, his fourth touchdown of the year. And the Bills will add on to their lead. 
You have fun with this one, partner. Oh, yeah, man. He's been fun to watch. Now Parkey for the extra point. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Here's Parkey now set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. First and ten, Stafford, and they take him down. The Bills get to him. Alec Ogletree in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And that incompletion was caused by the defense. I think they were trying to get one into the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver there. But they were in zone defense. And what are the advantages of being in zone? Eyes and reaction. Eyes meaning all eyes are on the quarterback and able to react when he throws the football and rally to that spot. And that's exactly what happened there. Able to get there and knock it away. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They were stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. Now Taylor to throw on second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, four is good. And he's got his tight end play. Touchdown, Buffalo. Charles Clay, his third touchdown of the game and fourth on the year. And the Bills will extend their lead. Parkey with the extra point. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. On first down, Stafford. Throw left side, taken in by Merida. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Throwing on first down. Stafford. Coleman has it here right side. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Over the middle, complete. That's Powell. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 more yards there and another first down. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, 
he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. If you're a defender, one of the fun things about playing zone defenses, especially in today's football, is that it's not as static as it was in the good old days, meaning you just dropped to a point and reacted to the football. Now you end up with a lot of man-to-man -man principles once you get into your zone defense. In other words, get to your assignment and then locate a guy coming into your area, and then you end up covering him almost man for man. That allows him to make more plays on the football like the one we just saw there. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. And that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeout in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Time for a break. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after Three. having time to Three talk 19. it over. Three on third down, that's Morris. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. But well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Stafford on first down. And he rifles one incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target, and it's second down. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty is a result of that hit there. On first and ten, Stafford. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. A gain of six there on first. Here's Stafford now on second down. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. On first down, Stafford. Got a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. They got the win last week despite not having any interceptions. Tried to come up with one there, could not. But there's a stat category called PBU, pass breakup. That's important, too, when they got one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. 
So let's see what this is about. Holding offense. So take away the touchdown. It's kind of been one of those games for these guys. I think it's safe to say that that type of a play just added to their misery, right? Throwing again at Stafford. Gets it to Meredith complete. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. explosion help leading them to victory and the defensive guys they're just saying hey put those points up every week we'll just keep winning they will gratefully accept them won't they it makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow so for the bills the win is their fifth of the year as they move to five and eight. And they'll have another home date next week as the Detroit Lions come to town. Meanwhile, for the Jets, it's a loss that could have implications on the playoff race as they fall to nine and four. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Houston Texans. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Bills are victorious as we say so long from Buffalo.